What would you do if part of your Bible read like a fairy tale? Many years ago, my wife Deborah and I studied with the Summer Institute of Linguistics with Wycliffe Bible Translators, and we heard about a New Testament that was about to be printed in Papua New Guinea, where we were going, and was just going to press. Suddenly, the translators burst in, Don't print that Bible! We just found out. The whole thing is written as if it were a fairy tale. They had to go through the entire Bible and remove all the fairy tale markers so that it would sound like it was the word of God and not a child's bedtime story. We have a fairy tale marker in English. I used to whistle an entire child's fairy tale to the preschoolers next door to my kindergarten class and they understood the whole story without my uttering a single word. Listen right now. Did you hear it? Once upon a time, there were three bears. Once upon a time is a fairy tale marker, but I can shorten it. Once there were three bears. That single word once is a fairy tale marker. The King James Bible never uses the word once like that. That's because it claims to be telling the truth, not a fairy tale. In Luke 16:19. Jesus says, there was a certain rich man. And in verse 20, Jesus says, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. The word once does not occur in the Greek at all. But what if I were to show you a number of Bibles that have added the word once to Jesus' words? The Message Bible says, there once was a rich man. The Knox New Testament says, there was a rich man once. These Bibles here say, once there was a rich man. And these Bibles instead say, there was once a rich man. Oh, in this Bible, the New Catholic Study Bible from Catholic Bible Press, it's actually a division of Thomas Nelson Publishers, the same people who gave you the American Standard, 1901, the Revised Standard, 1946 and 52, and the New King James. If I say, there was a certain man named Pete, that's a narration. But if I say, once there was a man, you assume that's a bedtime story, not narrating a fact. But Jesus doesn't deceive us into believing in a place that does not exist. Just as surely as he said in John 14 too, I go to prepare a place for you, that's heaven, so he also wants us to believe the true story about a real hell in the story of Lazarus and the rich man. But man added a fairy tale marker that Jesus never said. No Greek manuscript says once. They added it so that you would believe it's a fairy tale and leave you room to doubt the existence of a real hell. Jesus told us the name of that poor, sore-filled man Lazarus. How did he know? Because he's God. Lazarus is with Jesus in heaven right now. He also told us the conversation between the rich man and Abraham in hell. How did he know? Because he's there. Jesus is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Psalm 139.8 says, If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. In John 3.13, Jesus proves he's omnipresent. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Even while he was on earth with Nicodemus, he said he was also in heaven. He was also in hell with the rich man, was talking with Abraham. But many modern Bibles would make you doubt that. That's why 30 of them remove the words, which is in heaven, from John 3.13. I didn't even know it was missing until I came back to the King James. So the other Bibles took away what Jesus said about being on earth and in heaven and added a fairy tale marker that Jesus never said to make you doubt the existence of a real hell. 
But if you don't believe Jesus' words about hell, why would you believe his words about heaven? Do you see how evil this is? When you add to or take away from God's words, all you have are man's words, words that men stuck into God's mouth. Do you want a Bible that removed from John 3.13 a clear reference to his omnipresence and added to Luke 16 a word to make you think that Jesus' teachings on hell are a fairy tale? Or do you want God's holy, preserved words in English with nothing added and nothing taken away? The King James Bible. They're as different as heaven and hell.